So whenever Mrs. Puff makes a getaway or commits a crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these writers don't just do stuff randomly, they have reasons for everything. And the most damning piece of evidence from this newspaper is actually the picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange photo, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen this exact same photo of her before. In the episode No Free Rides, when she imagines what would happen if SpongeBob got his license. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. This means that this isn't just her imagination of what might happen. This is also her remembering what happened when she lived in New Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish reporting the news is the exact same one who reported about her in New Kelp City. Welcome to LJ Reaction Mission. Now we know what the screen theory was when he called Swiver because he had a dying pet. In conspiracy two, we knew that Saint was talking to the narrator when she called the narrator. Now it's conspiracy three. We're going to see the Miss Puff theory. Who is Miss Puff? Is Miss Puff really the bowling teacher? Or is she really just a spy? This is not Mrs. Puff. You wait, 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 what do you mean, what do you mean? I thought Mrs. Pop was just a bone teacher. For years, she's been running from her dark and mysterious past. But it's what, what like past? What, what, what type of past? Hey, drop it down in the comment and, and guess. What type of past Mr. Pop have? But in no way, they already started off saying Mr. P you, Mr. Pop and not really Mrs. Pop. Right? Or... It, it's something. It's something you got. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking. Let's get, let finish it. Controlling her life and psychologically torturing her. If you guys thought my last two theories were mind blowing, get ready for my biggest conspiracy yet. This is the Mrs. Puff theory. I gotta start off by saying, wow, the reaction to my last two SpongeBob theories has been insane. Have it seen no! Have it seen no! Squilliam, you lying, deceiving, who is that handsome young devil? I'm glad you guys are enjoying my ridiculously deep dives into this show. I mean, I have to watch so much SpongeBob and read so much of the Wikipedia to put these theories mm -hmm. together, but it's worth it because the writers actually take the time to set these things up. Now, a lot of people have been asking, Alex, how do you come up with these crazy conspiracy theories? Well, I always start these theories by looking for the moments in the show that seem to be implying more than they're letting on. Like I've said before, Spongebob is a weird show with lots of abstract humor, but I can usually understand the intent the writers had behind a weird joke. But then there's stuff like this. I hope I still remember how to do this. Yeah. And it's so confusing and weird that it feels like the writers are trying to imply something beyond just weirdness for the sake of comedy. And nowhere in the show is there more of these moments than with Mrs. Puff. And once I started looking into it, it led me down the deepest rabbit hole I've ever seen from this show. So, let's begin. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher in Bikini Bottom. Yeah, we all know that. SpongeBob SquarePants. He's taken her driver's test hundreds of times and he always ends up failing it and causing destruction and chaos that usually ends up with Mrs. Puff going to jail, despite it not really being her fault. We also know that she was once married, but her husband was killed by fishermen. That's my driving teacher, Mrs. Puff! Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. Oh no, Mr. Krabs, she's single. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? She You're wrong for that! There are moments like this that seem to be hinting at her having a dark, mysterious past. And in season 2, episode 10, No, no Free Ride, is the biggest clue about who Mrs. Puff really is. After SpongeBob fails the driving test yet again, Mrs. Puff has just had it with him and ends up just giving up and giving him his license, even though he never really passed. She quickly realizes that this is a horrible idea and he'll probably end up destroying the entire town. <laughs> Destruction. This reporter asks, why? Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor who... <laughs> 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 
remember this clip because it's going to be very important later on. And then she says this insanely revealing line. What, what have I done? Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name. No, not again. No, not again. Come on. Whoa, 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 you telling me this happened before? This happened before? So, hold on, Miss Miss Paul. So, so, so you tell me you had a boarding school before, and and you gave someone the slip up. What happened? You screwed the whole uh, town, and you went to jail, and now you, you wow. Sorry about this. So we now know Mrs. Puff was originally from a different town. She used to own a different boarding school, and Mrs. Puff isn't even her real name. There's something that's not her real name. Now, there's been some debate over whether she's actually referring to a new name for herself or for her boating school, but I do think she's talking about her own name, because if she's trying to run away from something in her past, she wouldn't start a new boating school with her real name in the title. Now, when she says again, I don't think she's just referring to starting a new life. Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. Not again. I think at her previous boating school, she had a terrible student just like Spongebob who she prematurely gave a license to and it led to something so terrible happening that she had to run away and start a whole new life. In season 3 episode 5, Doing Time, we get a flashback to when she first opened up the school. Where did I go wrong? With the opening of my new boating school, I pledge that as long as a student is willing to learn, I shall be With the opening of this new boating school, let's keep in mind that this is not her first boating school. Maybe the whole reason she's making this pledge now, at her second school, is because she gave up on a student at her previous school, and that led to her having to run away and start a new life. She's pledging to never make the same mistake again. Now let's skip ahead to one of the new aye, episodes, aye, aye. Season 12, Episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has Spongebob organize all the stuff she keeps in the school's mm -hmm. lighthouse. There's lots of interesting things hidden in the background, but the first thing that caught my eye was this file labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher to have files on all their students, but why would she have a file about herself? But let's remember, she's yeah. not Mrs. Puff. That's a fake identity. I, 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 we, 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 we get it. Mrs. Puff not her real name. I, no free rides, she just gives Spongebob a license that she already had from him. So she clearly makes these licenses and would probably know how to make fake identifications. But that's not the only hint mm -hmm. about Mrs. Puff's past in this lighthouse. There is something in here that directly confirms all of this. As Spongebob swallows all of Mrs. Puff's junk, we see something very interesting for only a few frames. The arranged boat teacher makes getaway. Ten seasons later, and the creators are still hiding stuff about Mrs. Puff from the Yo! We actually get a ton of new information. Yo! Yo! Distracts authorities with balloon animals. And do you remember that clip from the beginning? I hope I still remember how to do this. Yeah. So whenever Mrs. Puff makes a getaway or commits a crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these writers don't just do stuff randomly, they have reasons for everything. And the most damning piece of evidence from this newspaper is actually the picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange photo, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen this exact same photo of her before. In the episode No Free Rides, when she imagines what would happen if Spongebob got his license. The consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. This means that this isn't just her imagination of what might happen. This is also her remembering what happened when she lived in New Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish reporting the news is the exact same one who reported about her in New Kelp City. Let me, let me explain. We know from the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob that reporters uh, uh, from the Bikini yeah. Bottom News can also work for the New Kelp City News. But the real reason I think this is because of his hair. In the entire show, we have never seen this fish reporter with hair before. Why would the creators go out of their way to ask- Why did you- How- mostly seem like just mm -hmm. one-off moments. One -off. And for the most part, Mrs. Puff is still a functioning member of society, right? I'm going to show you that Are you sure? much, 
Sure. Much more insane and delusional than you may think. And some of the episodes she's in take place entirely in her own head. If we're talking about how insane um, Mrs. Puff is, there is no better place to start than the episode doing time. Once again, Spongebob we mean by doing time. testing causes destruction and chaos. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we already know about that. Bringing into jail to try and bust her out. But Mrs. Puff actually prefers being in jail over teaching him. We actually get another interesting line about Mrs. Puff's past in this episode. Okay, you can do this, Puff. You can get through this with so we know that Mrs. Puff has lost her sanity in the past, probably from her previous terrible students. But she I... that she's recovered since then, except in this episode she has a complete mental breakdown. SpongeBob keeps appearing in impossible places until she gets thrown into solitary confinement, where each wall of the room transforms into a giant SpongeBob face. And then the episode ends in a way that's so weird and confusing that it rivals the infamous gorilla episode ending. As Mrs. Puff freaks sound, she suddenly transported back into the beginning of the episode when Spongebob was taking the test. Except this time, Spongebob gets arrested instead of her. going on in this episode? Was the ending all in her head? Is Mrs. Puff just caught in an endless loop? I think this entire- <laughs> I don't- I don't get it. I- I- Time, but she's been imagining herself inside of prison. I can explain. Listen closely to what the police officer tells Mrs. Mm Puff. -hmm. I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. And then revealing she's still in a prison uniform despite being on the outside. So, this scene is obviously inside of her head, which means everything we see is symbolic. And if we can understand the symbolism of it, we can understand what's really going on with Mrs. Puff. Notice how she's suddenly wearing a black and white striped prison uniform, even though the entire episode she's been wearing this orange jumpsuit. Why would the creator go to the extra effort to draw a whole yeah, uniform? Yeah, that don't mean well, no sense. We've seen her wear this black and white prison uniform before, the very first time she went to prison back in Season 1, Episode 7, Hall Monitor. So when the police officer Yo! says, on your time, he's referring to the first time she went to jail. But why is she still wearing that uniform outside yeah. of prison? Well, she may have gotten out of jail, but she was by no means free. Having to teach Spongebob is a prison in itself, and she manifests that by believing she's in jail and- Hold on, tell me that the only way she would not get thrown back in jail is she have to teach Spongebob. So, she, so if Spongebob is going to town, it's her fault because she put as a reason that she will help Spongebob, Spongebob get his driver's life all me anything. But if my father scored the town, car, anything, it's all her fault. Wow. I mean, that mess. Oh. So every time Spongebob magically appears, it's all inside of her head. She is completely delusional. The hints that she's experiencing these hallucinations don't stop there. Just six episodes later, she goes mm -hmm. to a house party Spongebob throws. And while everyone is talking and having a good time, in the background we see she's literally sitting by herself talking Why are you talking? Hold on! Look at this. That, that, yeah, she's seeing a thing. No free ride. I back, back at no free ride. picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff creating an infinite loop. This is something that is all oh, right. That's it. That, that, that like everything in the show, there is a reason for it being there. One of the SpongeBob right. storyboard artists actually called it the biggest mystery in the entire show. If you think about not, it, not really, like not really, not really, not really. Where she's stuck in an infinite loop of SpongeBob failing the driving test because it's all symbolic of what her life is just an endless cycle of SpongeBob taking the test and failing. And no matter what she does to try and escape, she always ends up back in the same place at the end of the episode. So this picture is another symbolic manifestation of what she's feeling. We even see another one of these pictures all the way in Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper. This is something the show is consistently alluding to. Mrs. Puff is an unreliable narrator, and anything we see with her could potentially all be inside of her own head. In fact, I believe I found another episode that takes place inside of her head. Season 9, Episode 17, Bumper and All Pants. 
SpongeBob goes to a different boating instructor and actually gets his license. But as soon as he does, we briefly cut to Mrs. Puff waking up. You pass. I finally got my driver's license. Oh, oh. I can't do all this by your windows. It's the end of the world. Now, this seems like it's probably just a throwaway gag. Uh huh. Y yeah, 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 right? Got his license, and it causes her to wake up and freak out. You know, it's a good bit. It's funny. Mm -hmm. But I have a question. If the joke is that she's supposed to be waking up at the exact time SpongeBob gets his license, how come she wakes up at night when SpongeBob? Hold on! Hold on for a minute! Joe, Joe, you talk. Joe, if SpongeBob got his license in the daytime, then Miss Bob is supposed to wake up. What? Wake up the same time and SpongeBob getting his license, right? Then how is that dark? How did I die all, all, all rain? And this is the only part of the episode in the real world. <laughs> I don't know what that was on the I'm glad it's over. Let me pause for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if this contradicts my mm -hmm. previous Spongebob video with the television theory. If you haven't watched that one, the gist of it is that the entire show is a documentary television show. It is. And everything we see is actually being secretly filmed mm -hmm. by scuba divers. And there's a ton of evidence to support it. I'm very proud of that video. You should definitely check that it out. That video But if everything's supposed to be from a camera, then how are we um, seeing things from inside Mrs. Puff's head? In fact, yeah. how do we see dreams and flashbacks and thought bubbles? Well, yeah. I think the simple answer is that even though we view the show through an objective camera lens, the world itself still follows the rules of a cartoon. You can never tell them that they're living souls. Wait, wait, hold on! Was that my pen is out of ink? I didn't! You'll never get me formula. Not even in a flashback. In the world of SpongeBob, you can imagine something and other people can still see, record, or interact with it because that's just how cartoons work. Back to the theory. We know that her insanity has caused her to live a life of delusion. But if you remember back to the Lighthouse episode, Aye. she's also become an extreme hoarder. And looking at her collection of junk is like a look directly into her mind. So there's gotta be something we can learn about her from it. There's a picture of her boyfriend, Mr. Krabs. The hall uh, monitor belt she gives her students, uh -huh. the mean drawings her students make her, Spongebob's diary, a loading safety helmet. Wait, wait, Spongebob's diary? Wait. Why does she have Spongebob's wait. diary? Yeah. The last time we saw that, it was safely put away in Spongebob's library. What's it doing in her lighthouse? And why does she have Squidward's painting? And a table from the Krusty Krab? And Spongebob's bike? And Squidward's teddy bear? And the hair curlers Mr. Krabs had? And that statue of Squidward? And that diamond ring? And that crown? And that bucket of radioactive waste? And that jellyfish sign? Oh. My oh god. my god, Mrs. Puff Mrs. is a kleptomaniac. kleptomaniac. Mrs. Puff has Mrs. been stealing from Puff everyone in Bikini, Bikini Bottom. Bikini I can even prove that her pet snail from season 3 episode 19 was stolen. My snail is up a tree, I've had her since I was a little girl. No! Hmm. You've had that snail since you've been a little girl, huh? Then how come that is the exact same snail Squidward had four episodes ago in the Great Snail Race? Hold on for a minute! Do you stole that from Squidward? Don't tell me you stole that from Squidward. Mrs. Clearly stole the snail from Squidward. But why the hell would Mrs. Puff steal all this other junk? What possible yeah. use could she have for any of it? Yeah. You can find the answer to that question by looking at this green hat and mm -hmm. this purple jacket. These were gifts Mr. Krabs bought her on their first date, but she ended up feeling uncomfortable receiving them and gave them back to him. I'm afraid I just don't feel comfortable accepting all these gifts. <laughs> Except apparently she's not too uncomfortable to steal them back afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't stealing this stuff because she wants to use it. She just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her everyday life. And remember, this isn't the first time True. In fact, I have reason to believe that she started stealing things way back whenever she first went insane. I hope I still remember how to do this. I don't think she's just talking about remembering how to make balloon animals. She's probably also referring to remembering how to steal a boat. And if that's not enough for you, in a Spongebob comic book, she actually admits that she used to rob banks and she wears the exact same ski mask. Mrs. Puff lives a completely delusional and miserable life, all because she has to teach Spongebob how to drive. It's led her to steal from the people wow. she cares about and completely disassociate from reality. But that begs a very important question. If Spongebob is causing her life to be so miserable, then why does she even keep teaching him? After all the destruction and pain he's caused, she can totally be justified to expel him, right? I mean, she will literally try and kill him so she doesn't have to teach him. She's not wrong about that. Alex, you're not wrong about that. 
and, and Mr. Park going all this good spunk ball, then why are you still teaching him? Like, you are insane, but you still teaching this same person that made you insane. So, why are you still teaching him? But for some reason, she, for can't, some reason she can't just expel him. It's almost like there's, someone, almost like there's forcing someone forcing her to teach SpongeBob. Back to the episode no free rides. After prematurely giving SpongeBob a license, she steals his boatmobile so he can't hurt anyone. In the end, this causes her to get arrested and go to jail, but then SpongeBob tells her this. And besides, the warden says she'll let you go early if you do her a favor. What's that? Free driving lessons! She'll get to leave prison early if she gives free driving lessons. That seems like an oddly specific requirement. Yeah. And that's not the only time this gets mentioned either. In Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper, we get this scene. If only Spongebob could pass his boating test, he'd be out of my life once and for all. Unfortunately, I keep getting reminded of the consequences if I get too angry with the little nuisance. Consequences? Are you telling me that if she refuses to teach Spongebob specifically, she'll be violating her people and get sent back to jail? Why does the prison even care if it's Spongebob? Is it just part of some weird community service? But things start to get really suspicious at the end of Season 7, Episode 5, Summer Job. Once again, Mrs. Puff ends up in jail, but this time she's forced to go to a prison boating school. Wow! A driver's education class! Good day, class! <laughs> I, 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 I'm confused, I'm confused, I'm confused. What are you, you getting on oh, about, about this? I'm following in your footsteps and got a job as a driver's ed teacher for the summer. <laughs> Who in their right mind would hire Spongebob to do this after he's literally destroyed the city? Yeah, Spongebob failed hundred at a time. More times than I can count. And you tell me that you... I you tell me that y'all allow Spongebob to get his uh, driver at summer job? And y'all know that this man failed a hundred... Many, many thousands of times, and y'all allow him to be a, a driving ed teacher? Uh uh uh. Y'all, y'all have to kill me before I go and sit in the driving school to get taught by SpongeBob. I'd rather get taught by anybody else how to drive than SpongeBob. SpongeBob is not one of those person that can teach you how to drive, and he failed multiple times. How he gonna teach you how to drive, right? If you get fast to school, how you gonna uh, teach you how how to actually drive, drive when it comes to actually getting in a, in a vehicle? Forces her to sit there and listen to him. Get me out of here! Oh, 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 oh. And look at that evil smile he has as he watches her endure this torture. Wow. Or very strange going on with this prison. Then, in season 10, episode 8, uh -huh. The Getaway, Mrs. Puff meets a criminal named Dorsal Dan and starts to get romantic feelings for him. This is also while she's still dating Mr. Krabs. Shame on you, Mrs. Puff. Shame. At the end of the episode, they both actually shame, go to shame, prison, shame. and the warden puts him in solitary confinement. Warden, I found this one pulling up outside the prison. Dorsal Dan, a notorious getaway driver. Toss him the clink. Shame on you. In or out of jail, this prison will stop at nothing to make sure she is alone and miserable. But why? Who's behind all of this? Why would anyone care yeah. this much about torturing Mrs. Puff? Who's the mastermind pulling the strings? Well, maybe it has something to do with her old life in New Kelp City. Maybe she crossed someone and they've been plotting their revenge ever since. But I've looked in every single frame of New Kelp City and there is nothing connecting it back to the prison. I've looked literally everywhere and there's not a single person from the city that has anything to do with Mrs. Puff. Well, I mean, maybe except for maybe except. the literal warden of the prison she's being kept in. He may be hiding slightly off screen, but that is clearly the same warden of the Bikini Bottom. Oh, dang! Wait a minute! This is a real minute! It's a high difference! All you want, but not this time. But wait a second, wait a second. If the warden was originally from New Kelp uh -huh. City, then he'd probably know about Mrs. Puff's dark past and her true identity. So, why hasn't he exposed her? Yeah! Why about the fact that one of his inmates is living a completely false identity? She'd probably even get more prison time when they find out who she really 
is, so... And she probably might be, be in jail longer than, than a month. Or more. And that led to them causing chaos and destruction. Maybe this student accidentally did something terrible to the warden, and he's blamed Mrs. Pup ever since. Whatever happened was so terrible that it caused him to move to Bikini Bottom and get a job as the warden of the town's prison. And to his surprise, he finds out that one of his inmates is actually the person he blamed for that terrible thing happening. This works out perfectly for him. He can finally get his revenge on Mrs. Puff by making her life miserable. All he has to do is reveal her dark secret, and she'll be stuck in jail for much longer. Except for one small issue with this. Right. Mrs. Puff actually likes being in prison. One day down, 2,500... Yeah, she has to do. So, it's not going to be joyful for him. If, if, if you try to get revenge on somebody, and, and you know that person like what, what the revenge was, then it'd be, it'd be hard for you to even think about getting revenge. So, he comes up with a new plan. Keep Mrs. Puff's secret and let her out of prison early, but only under the condition that she has to teach Spongebob. He's literally turning her normal life into a prison. And he makes sure going back to prison to avoid Spongebob isn't even an option for her anymore. But so, that would be doing it. So, you, you tell me, if, if he, he sent you to prison, you'll like that, but it's not going to be happy for him. Because you like being a prison. But if, if he lets you teach somebody that unteachable to actually drive an uh, actual vehicle, then it'll be miserable and he'll be happy. Wow. We first see him in season 4, episode 2, Crabs vs. Plankton. Mm -hmm. In this episode, Plankton slips on some water on the Krusty Krab and decides to sue Mr. Krabs for everything he owns. And then guess who shows up out of nowhere and offers to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer? Really? He's a good lawyer. Whoa, did somebody say lawyer? Richard A. Bottom feet up. Attorney at law. I couldn't hey, you came fast. Despicable display. Richard A. Bottom feet up. The warden of the Bikini Bottom prison is also apparently a lawyer. That's kind of strange. That don't make no sense. It don't make no sense right there. Then he says he'll be Mr. Krabs' lawyer completely free of charge. So, uh, how much is this gonna cost me? Actually, I won't charge a dime unless we win. Well, that's awfully generous of you, Richard. He seems very confident that he can win the case, but right before he goes to court, he slips on some water and says SpongeBob will have to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer now. Oh, this is gonna be a slam dunk. Mr. Krabs' lawyer, speak to me. It's pain. Can't move. Looks like you're gonna have to handle this one, son. He tells SpongeBob that he has to represent Mr. Krabs, even though he himself called SpongeBob a liability. Actually, SpongeBob, we won't be needing any testimony from you. Why, well, you'll be more of a, uh... I'm a liability than an asset. But it's okay, because okay. apparently all SpongeBob needs to win is inside of Richard's briefcase. Everything you need to win <laughs> is in this here case. <laughs> really? Everything? Except when SpongeBob gets to court, he realizes that Richard never gave him the combination to the case. It's uh, all in here. Really? Yep, right. Yep. Here. Is there a problem? Uh, your lawyer didn't give me the combination. Either Richard A. Bottomfeeder is the worst lawyer in history, or this is all part of his elaborate plan to ruin Mrs. Puff's life. Here's what I think happened. Oh, he I don't Mr. feel Krabs like... Wins, and he wants to ensure that Mr. Krabs loses the case, mm -hmm. because he wants to destroy any chance Mrs. Puff has at finding love. So he pretends to be a lawyer, even offering his services for free, something Mr. Krabs can't resist. He makes Mr. Krabs feel confident that they're going to win the case, and then at the last second, uh -huh. he pretends to get into an accident so he can't represent Mr. Krabs. Instead of finding a real lawyer to replace him, he tells the most incompetent person for the job, SpongeBob, that he has to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer. Oh, is you that? Uh, that allegedly has all the answers in it without actually getting uh, SpongeBob the combination. Who called this for? For a stinking Mrs. Puff. refuses to let anyone get close to Mrs. Puff. Not Dorsal Dan and not Mr. Krabs. This guy has a million dollars of that you go this for. What exactly did her previous student oh, do that warrants this much torture? It can't be something as simple as him or his property getting damaged. It uh -huh. has to be something life-changing. Something like 
losing a loved one because of the student's reckless driving. And I think the show gives us one last hint about who this might have been. All the pictures of Mrs. Puff's house are very meaningful to her. She's got photos of Mr. Krabs, her pet snail, and of course those infinitely looping photos that told us so much about her mental state. But there is one more photo in this house that might be the key to this entire conspiracy. In season 12, episode 14 of Plankton's Old Chum, we see a photo of someone we've never seen before on Mrs. Puff's wall. There's some surprising similarities between this character and Richard. The green color, the red bow tie, the overall fancy, serious appearance. It clearly is the same person, but maybe this is someone related to Richard, like a father, a son, or a brother that Mrs. Puff's yeah. former student killed. And the reason she keeps a photo of him up is to have a permanent reminder to never make the same mistake of giving someone a license who doesn't deserve it. Mrs. Puff is a boating okay. school teacher who once made a terrible mistake that led to the loss of her business, identity, sanity, and any chance of finding happiness. I like to think that there used to be a time when she was happy, back when her husband was still alive. If only he was still around today, maybe she wouldn't have to face all of this on her own. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Is what I would say if I was done, except her husband is still alive! Woo! Let's do this! In the Spongebob movie, Spongebob oh, oh, her husband's still alive! that's full of dead fish turned into knickknacks and ornaments. Except they end up setting off the smoke detector, which activates the sprinkler system and brings all the dead fish back to life, including a very familiar looking puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Puff is alive. Well, wait a second. If he's alive and he escaped, then why hasn't he gone back to Mrs. Puff? Yeah. Why is she still alone? Because remember, she ran away from their home in New Cup City and started a new identity. So sadly, Mr. Puff has no way of finding her. The tragedy of Mrs. Puff's story is that her happiness is just a city away, but she can never even leave town because that would violate her parole. Richard A. Bottom Feeder probably even knows her husband is alive and is making